Warning, the show contains adult content and content that will actually probably change your life. Welcome to another edition of Up and In It. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff. If you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Today's episode 269 is Simple Living Life Hack. And I chose this uh, subject matter today uh, because I know that a lot of people are suffering out there and there's a lot of things that are changing. And just basically for the pure delight that I have just been noticing uh, more than ever of the amount of freedoms and things that I have acquired in my life. And when I look in contrast to a lot of the other people around me, uh, what I'm observing, like I says in a lot of other shows, is a lot of scrambling, a lot of of personal growth that is needed <clears throat> and there's a lot of things that are inhibiting those things there's a lot of ideologies uh, what i am witnessing as well is listening to a lot of the so-called ty- the tycoons the people who are successful who've got the money and it's kind of like the lottery story right grass is always greener on the on the other side as they say but once people acquire a lot of money uh, like they do when they win the, the lottery here and um, I know we have listeners from all over the world that's uh, we're talking about United States I'm, I'm pretty sure they've got a lottery uh, everywhere but look at the stories you know a lot of us aspire to, to winning the lottery and being like these people you know being rich and a lot of these people and they say it's some of the worst things that's ever happened to them you know or it is the worst thing that's ever happened in their life. Some of them have died. Some of them have been ripped off, raped. You know, they're stolen from. They lost their family, divorced. Uh, just so many bad, bad things that, that happened to them. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's because of money. I think it's a lot that has to do with the mindset. And that's one thing I'm noticing from self-made millionaires, people who are out there really hustling it up, making something happen. A lot of these people feel that there's a great part of their life that's missing. And we have a lot of people, uh, uh, such as a friend of mine, uh, agreed with me and, you know, shared the information is a lot of these people are joining monasteries and stuff like that, getting rid of a lot of physical possessions to experience enlightenment. And there's so much. Uh, I think I also listened to a Joshua something. Uh, I've been listening to him quite a few years now, off and on from the Radical Personal Finance and his show is pretty much dedicated to uh, creating financial wealth within 10 years or less, you know. And one of the shows I just listened to the recent, you should check it out, that's the uh, Radical Personal Finance, was the, uh, are we free? Are we truly free? And it was a very negative, uh, I think it was a positive for me, though. Uh, but let me explain his show. It was basically saying that if you want freedoms in life, you should aspire to be rich, and he said, and and Joshua did say, bless his heart. Uh, he hate it. He's he's repelled. It, it, it's makes him sick to say something like that. But he's been searching and searching his entire life, <coughs> and working on his life, just like I have for mine. And uh, we're kind of in the same spot where actually he's very uh, wealthy. It looks like very like a maybe a millionaire or something. He's living in France right now like traveling all over Spain and things like that had some very interesting uh, out, outcomes of uh, spending in places that you know time in places like France wondering if there's more freedom than there is here in the United States and one of the things he found out was that it's actually worse out there he's like it is no joke um, but his whole thing was that if you were financially set you can just move to another place where you where it was there is more freedom to live the way you want that was what the podcast was a lot about was can you live the way that you truly want and i think there's a lot of merit to it i i for those of you listening to the show i am the same way with money i think that our whole society everything functions i mean all the goods services and things that we need for our for survival comes from money right it doesn't have to be 100 percent that but there's always a percentage that's going to happen where you know, you're going to have to pay property taxes. You're going to have to renew the registration in your vehicle. you got to maintain the vehicle. You're going to go live off grid. You're not going to have electricity or internet. How are you supposed to afford to get a, a new phone? How are you going to pay for the internet so that you can be in touch with the world unless you go live in the sticks? And even then, if we go, which Joshua didn't really touch on, has been a big thought of mine. In order to live free, um, 
that's the kind of life that uh, I look at as a mixture. It's a marriage, a hybridization of life, is which I continue. That's my life's work. I would like to live in a wafati, which is a hole in the ground. It's a, basically a fucking hobbit hole. You know, I've seen these bitch and I've researched so much about these things, but they're completely illegal. Why would I want to live in one? Because no matter what side of the uh, world I'm on, whether it's the desert or the mountains, the ocean, or the ocean, you can't live in the ocean. Uh, you can live on the surface, but yeah, no matter where you're living, if you dug it yourself a hole in the ground and these really cool, I'll, I'll share with you guys quickly here. They basically cut out a hole in the ground uh, in a hill and they fill it with sand. And then what they do is they layer rocks and they make like a front door and everything out of stone and things like that. Make your windows and all those kind of things. Board, board up your windows so the sand doesn't come out, you know. And basically, uh, they, they build the framework and also the, the roof out of uh, um, rock and concrete. So the sand holds the big hole together from everything collapsing into itself. And structurally and engineeringly done precisely, uh, uh, mathematically correct, you know, with the amount of weight distribution and things like that. And the geometry of the wedging of the stones what happens is they'll pour concrete they'll lay all the stones down the way they want it <clears throat> they'll pour the concrete over let everything settle when it settles they dig out the sand and they have this huge hovel I'm really bitching I mean you can put sandstones and all kinds of and these things will last years, hundreds of years uh, what happens though is geothermically these it stays a nice good cool temperature and in, in it's like a cellar right it doesn't really accelerate because it's in the ground First of all, to, as well as I, for those of you who know who I am, I like to tread lightly on the planet. I like to do things uh, in conjunction with nature, and I can't think of a better way and more and aesthetically pleasing compared to, you know, Western society's eyes. They'd probably look at that and be like, that's fucking weird. To me, if you can't even see my house and it looks like nature, that's, to me, I've already won a huge part of the game, right? <clears throat> I feel like I'm living like a squirrel. But none of these freedoms aren't there. So we have to use, what are the hacks? What are the things that we have uh, that we can utilize into our lives? And why? So simple living, uh, I chose this subject matter today, is because that's what allows you to do many, many things on multiple levels. And I want there's so many. Uh, I think it's going to be a big uh, discussion part. I'd like to know from you guys, comments below or, you know, there's an email there. You guys can message me what you guys want to hear. But I feel like this is a very strong um, area that we should keep revisiting during the lifetime of the show. So my question on my first set of notes here is what if we started or restarted life in a different way? Well, and when I say this, as again, my observation with people is that they're so high spun they're so overtaxed, overspent, they uh, act way above their wage, W-A-G-E, and there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of unhappiness, and a lot of people I just experienced, I, 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 I get this every day, guys, and this might be one of you. Uh, my neighbor got up and was like, oh my God, do I have to go to work, you know? Why can't I just get on, live off the government like everybody else? I wanted to tell her because a lot of these people are fucked. Uh, when it comes to even renting a house now, uh, landlords are very freaked out, right? They're going to look at people's incomes and everything. They don't want to get screwed. I don't know what part of the world you live in, some of these listeners, but here in at least Sunnyside, California and, uh, you know, United States, and I believe this is all over the United States, is that the uh, government put the kibosh on kicking people out, even though they're not paying their rent. But they did nothing to help out the landlords. So landlords got pretty much fucking screwed. And they're not happy about that. So a lot of these people farting off, they... Uh, you know, I think they've shot themselves in the foot. Uh, it's going to get very interesting. <clears throat> but the way we could do things different is we need to change our mindsets, everything. And I know this is, people are probably tired of hearing the mindset thing and you get yourself straight first, but really that's where it starts. But we're going to go into some hacks today of why and how. And I would like to see if I have time to talk about how the simple life has affected my life and the freedoms and things. So I'll try to incorporate that in here. So what if we started or restarted life a lot different. When we look at our current situations, this shit's not working, right? If you're listening to the show intently and you are looking around and you're overtaxed and tired and just basically unhappy, who gives a fuck if you're making all the money and everything? Like I said, these rich people, but there's something missing out of your soul, your life. That's, that's pretty fucked up, I think. We should have self-fulfillment. Money doesn't buy everything, as they say, uh, but it's pretty damn, you know, it doesn't buy happiness, I should say. But it's, as I said, it's pretty damn close. You take money away and people get angry, but, you know, things get fucked up. But if we 
if we come in with, with a, the right type of angle of why we're making money, which is where I'm at. I make enough money to get by, actually more than get by. I'm able to save for investing and things like that if I so choose to. We're going to talk about money is, is pretty much one of the big ones here. Um, I, I'm able to take time off and utilize, use money as a tool basically to get the shit out of my mouth. I make just enough money. I know how much taxes I got to pay. I spent a lot of time organizing my life this way. And that's what I hope to share with a lot of these shows with you guys to ease and, and get you guys in a simple life. <coughs> the initial startup is, is it, it could get frustrating, right? There's a lot of things to look at. But once we understand them, and once we, I've made it so simple for my life where everything's streamlined now. And once I get the simple understanding, because of living in a simple life, which I don't think I have in my notes here with the time to be able to observe things, now I'm able to see where the money's going, where the stress is going, where my energy is going, and not be like my neighbor and have to immerse myself into something so intensive uh, that I hate, that I, I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing I think about is why the fuck am I alive? Oh my God, I got to go to my job. I hate this shit, right? I'm able to observe those things. And it's, it's not like it's all he heaven. You know, it's not like I wake up with a bowl of fucking cherries every day. There's problems, there's stresses, but not nearly as many as most people. So when I say restart your life and get back on it, get this, the ignition started here in the fucking the mental vehicle, is I think uh, we can do things different. And how do I mean? Um, I want to talk about what a low overhead affords you. And we'll get into money. Because I think, as I said, we started off this show on the note of money. And I think that has a huge say-so of where people go. Is it the all say-so? No. So <clears throat> some people have told me it must be nice to be rich by eating all organic foods and ca drinking kombucha all the time, raw milks and like, you know, uh, going out to sushi and which we don't really go out to restaurants a lot uh, at all, really. I mean, um, at the most, I think I'd go to eat sushi or something because it's my favorite food uh, maybe twice a month. You know, maybe, I doubt it. It's usually just once a month. And I'll take my kids out and we have our specific spots and we buy whatever we want, right? So, but a lot of people, that's so nice. And, oh my God, you're living the dream. You're able to take off. You know, my neighbors would tell me, geez, you're, you know, it's funny this year. They're like, you were only gone for like six, seven weeks. You know, we thought, you know, did something happen? Usually you're gone longer. And they're just like living the dream, you know, and I could see in their eyes, some of these people are just like, you're just farting off, man. Or just, I wish I had that. I wish I can do that. In fact, it was interesting. I did meet somebody here when they were a child. Off note here, their parents did the same thing. They took their kids out traveling, camping and stuff for like weeks at a time. She says, it's, she's an older woman, says it's transformed her life. And was really beautiful. She says that it actually gave her comfort thoughts. And when she has bad times and stuff, she always thinks of those days sitting by the campfire in the mountains or the desert and the beach, wherever their, their travels with their, their family. And it just forever changed her life. So if you have children, I really recommend uh, taking them out into nature more than seven days. And I mean nature, nature. Like camping, camping, like bring your stove and shit like that. I'm not saying go kill animals with fucking rocks and shit like that. I'm saying get your kids out there and let them observe you <clears throat> in the elements and and to form themselves, their own identities and their, their skill sets and things like that. And it'll wake them up to so many things. And guess what? It's part of a simple life. You will be more fulfilled off of a, a camping trip. Uh, after seven days, you know, you guys are going to say, well, it's dusty and dirty. I need to get back to my house, my bed, my back hurts and all these things. But you know what? You start to get acclimated to, uh, in a short amount of time. After, you know, about the seventh day or so, some people are like, I am done camping. I'm ready to go home. But if you've got everything you need and you set yourself up fairly comfortably, it becomes your home. It becomes you know, not looking at your cell phone the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning or watching it while you go to bed. You start to notice the stars and hear the animals and the sound of the trees and things like that and the water and watching the sun and just looking at the magic that is the, of the magnificence of life that is around us that we take for granted every single day. Okay, yeah, but what does it afford us? Eating the healthy organic food. So it's a hack. In my life, I look at this the way this has resulted is that instead of spending my money on a, a very high mortgage and things like that, uh, I actually spend a lot of it on healthiness, on, on healthy foods that I give my child. Um, you see, it's a big thing for me too. I believe a lot of these stresses and I just heard something about the, uh, don't want to say it too loud, 
but the COVID, you know, that uh, a lot of the stress has uh, things to do with the, the DNA structure of your body and how certain viruses and things like that can affect it. And I 100% believe it. But it's just one of those, the least amount of, st or the, the reduction of stresses that I look at when I actually make a plate for my kids uh, and it's not processed food. There's some processed foods every once in a while, but uh, I give them that plate knowing that I've done the best that I can. And that makes me feel so, so good. But that's a, it, it's a hack in life that your food should be your medicine, your medicine should be your food. Why would we be working, you know, when we take a look at time frames, like investing, I see this as investing in yourself. I'm going to work, I'm going to neglect my health, I'm going to eat cheap foods, I'm going to shut off the lights and everything, which the lights don't really even take that much energy, but I'm going to literally neglect myself, I'm not going to go get, you know, blood work done every year to find out where my body levels are. I'm not going to get my teeth clean and stuff. I met people, they're like, it's been like six years since I've been to a dentist. I'm like, holy shit, man. You need to get out there. But we neglect ourselves and, and our, our families, our happinesses, our, our spiritual journeys and stuff to go fulfill buying a house. When we, as somebody smart, as an investor, as an investor, as I say, invest in everything, invest in you, look at the time frame. It's gonna, you're going to get a 30-year uh, mortgage. And by the time you pay that off, and if you don't think correctly and implement and plan in your life to look at how much you're going to have to work. So let's just say for the next 10 years, which is a really long time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat hot dogs, rice, and beans so I can buy a house. What the fuck are, you, are we thinking, right? You're, just, you're screwing your body up. Some stuff could be, they say, irreversible. I think everything can be irreversible if we get, you know, I don't want to get into that subject matter, but if we get in the right frame of mind and, pr and practices. But, but look at that, that uh, investment of how much you'd have to sacrifice. And look at all those who came before you. And I don't think that's very wise. I think that if there's some way, if we were starting out in life, that we're able to keep our health, you know, which is, is very important here. I want a, a lot of these things here can be implemented where we can start life off at a at a higher advantage. That's one of the things I look at. I wish I would have known now when we all say that. If I would have known now, back in my 20s or even my 30s, uh, and started implementing things, where would I be now? But that's the fun of life, you know. I'm not really regret that I hold on to because we can always restart differently. And that's exactly what I've done. I've restarted, I don't know, countless times. I talked on, pre on the last couple shows. And in fact, I think life is a complete restart continually there's always new things and imp improvising improvisations and and better ways of doing things uh, if we're not finding these things and implementing and making life easier as i love to say something's fucking wrong so organic foods and supplements you know a lot of people say same thing wow how do you afford such supplements you know uh, for instance i'm taking immune support by paul stamets which i love to endorse he doesn't know who i am i have no sponsors of the show i pay to be here but i take uh, his uh, seven mushroom immune response uh this comes from a man who's healed his mother from breast cancer with turkey tail mushrooms and just paul stamets he's the mushroom guy check him out uh, i'm on his lion's mane for memory support i've got my kid my, my special needs daughter on lion's mane um extract uh we take uh, th a couple thousand milligrams of vitamin C every day. I've got organic vegetable derived instead of petroleum derived vitamins. If you don't know what I'm talking about or you think I'm crazy, look it up. They derive even vitamins from petroleum. Uh, so yeah, I, I take a multiple amounts of other things as well, right? And I juice every single day, raw organic juice. Some people say it's expensive, but my money goes into my health, right? And, I, and if I started my life off this way, I'd probably have a six-pack instead of just a big barrel of a stomach. <laughs> um, next thing I want to move on to is education and audiobooks. <clears throat> just education in general. That's what a simple life hack does for you. You learn so much. Right now, I'm studying about real estate and just kind of getting a feel for it. Uh, one of the hacks I'd like to share with you guys is that I don't really have a lot of time. I work by myself mostly. Uh, in my construction business and on my farm and I can put my earbuds in and I know this is not easy for a lot of people but I can listen to these audiobooks and if I listen to them you know 10 15 20 times I start to develop the picture of what this person is talking about instead of just having that free time of just or having my brain wander in one direction I'm actually doing two things I'm making money or I'm planting uh, you know, vegetable crops and things like that. And I'm also getting an education. We're stacking functions as we've borrowed from uh, the practices of permaculture. 
We're doing many things at once. One of the hacks I looked at was that when you're going to bed is what I've been doing every night because I've just been so busy. Uh, I've got so many things to sort out that I don't have time to, you know, if I put the earbuds in, it's distracting, which is probably the same with a lot of you guys, especially nine to five workers. I mean, you can't be a cashier or bartender with earbuds in, right? Or something like that. Uh, but at nighttime when you go to bed, and if you got kids, right, you put them to bed, you shower them up, you brush teeth and everything, and set yourself up for at least 30 minutes of, of um, sleep time, you know, or of, of education time before you go to bed. And you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to be, you can pass out if you want. This is a moment where you have to yourself where everything's quiet. If you're in a relationship, you know, satisfy each other, bump uglies, take, get it fucking over with, clean yourself up, you know. And then a pretend you're going to bed so they'll leave you the fuck alone. No, get your audio books. A lot of audio books are also free online. If you look at um, uh, YouTube and stuff like that, you can literally find a lot of these for free. And educate yourself. Uh, one of the things that I do is that I'll listen to an audio book, a chapter. And uh, what I'll do is I'll... Sorry about that background noise. What I'll do is... Uh, when I wake up, when I go to bed the next day, when I passed out, I'll go back to what I can remember last, right? I mean, if you really want to learn about something like in, like real estate investing and things like that, what you're going to want to do is, uh, is keep listening and practicing these things. So over and over again, I go back to the areas that uh, I thought that it was the last I remembered. If I, there's something that's repeating itself, I just, you know, these audio books are cool. They got like a 15 minute or a 10 minute where you could push a button to fast forward. You know, so you just keep fast forwarding to the area where you last picked up from and just keep doing that every single night. And I guarantee you, if you want to get out of whatever you're into, you know, learn about anything, uh, this is a perfect way. It's going to night school. It's the exact same thing as listening to a fucking professor, right? So it's, you don't have anybody you can ask questions to. You have to actually think for yourself. But you can learn so many things through podcasts and things like that. So I thought that was a cool um, uh, uh, hack to share with you guys in Simple Living. And this is the type of hacks that if you pay attention to most things about stacking functions and stuff like that, I think that's one of the biggest problems, the hurdles that I see with, with society around me is that there's a lot of things that people uh, do that only serve one purpose. And it's not really getting them uh, far ahead. Each individual thing is compartmentalized. Whereas if we were to incorporate a lot of things into our lives and notice and appreciate them, uh, instead of waking up like my neighbor disgruntled, you would actually do some of these things happily and joyfully because they have much purpose in your life. Your food, you know that, it, yes, it is taking time out of my day, but it's, it's, it's stacking functions. It's healthy for me. It's organic. It's got lots of vitamins and nutrients. And it was done respectfully to the earth, as I said. The stress of you, of the way people's view on uh, the world right now is that everything's fucked. And I'm here to say that everything's not fucked. There's a lot of good things that you do by buying organic or growing some of your own food, which we're going to talk about, <clears throat> that makes you feel good and alleviates stress. So the very next one we just talked about real estate. I want to talk about. Uh, I've talked. I've said this before in my in, in previous shows. Is the practice uh, earning before you buy a house or any investment? <clears throat> and I think this could do anything. If you want to be, um, I don't know. You want to save money or something. I think a lot. The biggest trick. For people to understand is that a lot of people who are, not all, but a lot of people who are successful and rich or have savings and stuff, you know, like these people looking at me saying, you're lucky. No, I'm not fucking lucky. That's skill, son. <laughs> That's fucking hard work, dedication, and sacrifice. And knowing my numbers, educating myself, and formulating different uh, things, uh, imp improvisations, uh, uh, different uh, tactics, I would say, in life. And that's what happens continually. And I notice that things change and should get better. And a lot of these rich people, they worked really hard. And as I say, when you look at these successful people, uh, check out the confusement, the, the abandonment of the, of the self. That a lot of these people are just like, I don't know how to ground myself, right? How do I teach my children to identify with the cosmos and, you know, release their, their themselves, they just be able to stare at the stars or go to bed without a head full of anxiety and my heart re ready to rip out of my chest. We don't know how to do these things. They're completely lost. And it's all in there, right? But they've been conditioned and they've actually worked themselves out of uh, feeling in their body. So before you're, you're going to go down this heavy route, you might want to start practicing. That's exactly what the tactics I'm going to share in my life right now. I am actually getting pretty tired of living in the RV 
the RV living the tiny house, right? A lot of you guys just tuning in. I live full time in an RV park in an RV. I, I chose an RV. I was going to get a tiny house, but it was a lot cheaper. But I'm here. It's close proximity. There's not a lot of um, storage uh, places. It's not conducive to the way that I'm living. I, I mean, I, I'm brewing kombucha right now and fermenting foods and things like that. There's no place to put them. Um, it's just too too tiny. It's too tiny of a, of a space. So when I say I'd like to upgrade, what I mean upgrade for me is probably like the size of a garage or something, you know, where most people live, uh, uh, where most people store their fucking cars, you know. At the max, I'm looking at like 800, maybe 1,000 square foot house would be ideal for me. A lot less to clean, maintenance, heat, cool, and all those kind of things. Uh, but I've also positioned myself in an area of, you know, San Diego County, North County in, in uh, California, where the, the weather's pretty temperate. So I don't really have to worry about too much of uh, high fluctuations in temperatures and things like that. I'm relatively easier than someone living in, say, Arizona or in uh, uh, Florida or in, uh, what is it, uh, Wisconsin, where we get 50-something degrees fucking below. But yeah, so I'm able to... Uh, practice and I, I want to um, I, I'm thinking about getting a mortgage on a house I'm not sure but before I do all that uh, it's relatively high here where I live so one of the considerations that I'm doing is uh, I'm trying to make the amount of money that would need in order to make a, uh, a wise investment choice into real estate now the cool thing is I'm stacking functions here because what I'm doing uh, I kind of like the Dave Ramsey uh, sort of. I kind of like the Dave Ramsey approach to buying a house. You should be able to make uh, four times of what your um, your mortgage or your investment in my book and your business or whatever you're going to do. If you've got a, you know, a long payment, you got to make that uh, that payment. Your your real estate uh, payments, your mortgage payments, should only be a fourth of what you bring home. Uh, and uh, this is the one that gets really tricky. Is people talk net or uh, gross, and net is what you take home gross is you know you say you make a thousand dollars a week no you don't that's the uh after what the net what you bring home you're probably making like 750 dollars you know they're taking some stuff out of you i think comfortably we should take a look at the net what you actually make after taxes and things like that so you can actually survive because what's happening with me is i look at Let's take this practice run and let's make, uh, I don't know, $6,000, $5,000 a month to see if we can if we can hold that up, you know. And it's not just, uh, um, I want to talk a little bit financially here. Uh, it's not just about making, you know, enough money for food, uh, mortgage, gas, you know, say a little bit of savings. It's also to get yourself ahead. I think that's where people miss out is that, you know, no matter what, you want to be able to make more, some money to be able to save if you're in that that realm of, of existence dealing with the monetary system, you're going to want to make uh, enough money for yourself to put away for savings. So getting back to the dry run, the practice of earning this money is if I don't buy myself a house, I have a shit ton of money I'm able to put away in, in the bank to invest into, say, my business or a new business or something like that. Either way, I'm not doing, uh, I'm not doing myself harm. What's going to happen, though, is this is going to tell me, and this is where I look at if someone was starting their life out or they were going to restart their life, you know, whether it's making more money, do it. See if you can earn that new money. Go see if you can work your way up the job. As I said, these people who are miserable and full of anxiety, stress, and things like that because of the shit they got to handle, you know, some people can, some people can't. But what better gift to give yourself than to, you know, it's easier to demote yourself to go to get, go down the ladder than it is to climb up. Try to climb that, that corporate ladder. Get up on the top of the money-making machine. See how your body feels. See if you can maintain that. And before, and don't even invest it. Just put it all aside. Just pretend like you had to do this. And I think one of the biggest things uh, I've learned in simple living and the life hacks for me is is the uh, dedication. The uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Where uh, uh, not just the motivation and dedication, but the uh, it's an R word. Dang it, you know. Making, getting up and actually doing things that re repetitive. I can't. I hate when I lose my track of, of words here. You know, but you're basically, you come up with a plan and you stick with it. You don't fucking veer off. And I think a lot of people would veer off and say, well, I've been working so hard. I'm not going to. No, if you're going to practice something, you got to get in it and you got to do it with diligence. You got to do You got to stick to it and don't sway off. of it. I can't believe I can't think of the fucking word. Well, anyways, um, 
yeah, get get in there. So if you're looking for big money, uh, go and uh, and try to make that big money and see if your life, if your health, you know, as we're going down these lists of notes, see is your health starting to shit starting to happen? I guarantee you it will. I guarantee fucking to you if you start drinking kombucha and eating uh you know healthy foods like fermented foods and things like that, taking supplements, vitamins, getting exercise. Uh, and eating good from like cooking from scratch, just the flavor alone will get you. I mean, uh, it's it's some of the best food on the planet, you know, and uh, and the soul that goes in it. You go from that to working so fucking hard that you're eating processed foods, hamburgers and shit like that. You're gonna feel the fucking change. No exercise in the morning, uh, you're gonna feel the change, and you're gonna notice the changing in your sleeping habits, your thinking, your sex drive, everything. All of your your things are going to change when you stop taking care of your body and you become stressed out. If you can handle it, go for it. I'm not trying to doomsday this stuff. Some people can have an equal balance, and I truly 100% believe you can go in on this practice run. And you can see how you feel. I think it's the complete opposite as well. If you are making a shit ton of money, notice all the, where all your money's fucking going. It's going to buy, having somebody cook for you, right? Pre-made foods and things like that. Your brand new car. Your whole, the aesthetics of life. You're into the aesthetics, but not the functionality, right? Money doesn't help you a, a lot with the functionality. There's a lot of things that are keys that are missing. But start to um, downgrade your life. It doesn't mean you have to get out of your nice house or something. Just stop using certain portions of your house. Uh, start living simple. Start making your own meals. Start seeing how you feel when you would get up a little bit earlier in the morning and go for runs and things like that. Start basically moving out of your house into like one room at a time. Go get yourself an electric skillet. I know it may sound silly, but I grew, I, I, I cook all 100% of my food on a barbecue. I use it as an oven, a grill, everything. I cook outside year round. There, my, I literally do not have a stove in my home. I have one, but it's closed up and it's used as a, as a tabletop, right? Do some little practices. Get yourself a heat skill. You don't got to tell your friends so you get embarrassed or care what they fucking think of you. But start practicing living so simple. Try to figure out how far down you can take it. And you might notice that, you know what? This ain't as hard as what I thought. And in fact, <coughs> if you box things up in your, in your entire house and only took what was necessary and put it away, you're going to start noticing there's a lot less shit you got to do when you come home. Um, you're also going to notice that... Um, there was a lot, lot less things to clean. Uh, and you might notice that, you know what? Fuck this. I want to go make money, right? Either way, you haven't lost. Either one of these situations, you're able to do a practice run. So I look at this as with anything. I mean, if you're going to uh, uh, get into anything, but you're, you're living in a simple life, it gives you the simple life affords you, which if you did any of these experiments that I'm talking about, you're going to start implementing this philosophy into a lot of things in your life. Simple living, the biggest hack of living a simple life is that it opens you up to the freedoms to pretty much try anything and not have, and not have failure, to give yourself the, the time uh, to put the effort in and see if you actually like it. Uh, what worst thing I can think of, and I think this is the biggest problem with our society, is that they've gotten themselves into, by listening to the systems that be and people around them, they've got themselves into real estate investments, right? They, they bought themselves a home. What is the whole American dream? Get married. Get a, you know, get, get a wife. Fuck. Have babies. Get a house. You know, not necessarily on that order, but every, a lot of people are looking up to, to live in high standards of living. And do I look cool? Am I sexy? If I'm not sexy, I'm ugly. No, no, not at all. But the many of people have been fooled. So they live these lives and actually have locked themselves, imprisoned themselves, they cemented themselves in to a place where it's very difficult to get out of. I'm not going to say it's impossible. It's just going to take some ego dropping and things like that and some some planning. I don't, wouldn't advise anybody just drop everything. I would just say start working. You know, when you have to restart your life like me, it's like two, three jobs, right? Uh, life does, you get a lot more freedom, but if you want to actually make money off something or, or get out of some, it takes a lot of work. But once you get past that hump, life becomes a lot easier for you. So, um, investing in machinery, life hack, uh, simple life hack. If you were starting over, I see that there's so many things, we've talked about this before, is like really high high quality blenders are really really nice uh I'll, I'll i'll start with the blender first like i've spoke about this one because i've i don't know i've been doing it for my for probably about five six years now all of my lunches people 
for the past couple of years, not every single one of them, but the majority of them have been plant-based protein powdered shakes with honey and all kinds of flax seed, bananas, apple, strawberries, whatever. And I make these and I, that's, that's my uh, digestible um, lunch. I also do intermittent fasting. That's how I keep my weight at bay. And I believe it's healthy for me. It makes me feel good. But for the past six years, that, I mean, the same brand, same stuff. I should definitely change it up to vanilla or something. You know, they got some different flavors. I think it's vanilla and chocolate, and that's it. Um, hack, though, vanilla, you can make it taste like anything. But, yeah, I have invested in that machinery because it makes my life a lot easier. And I think that I wanted to talk about this first before I move forward is that when you start utilizing these machinery in your life, you're going to start noticing that uh, your health gets better, right? It's a lot easier. You just open up a jar, bam, lunch is down the gullet, you know, in like fucking five minutes. But it's got vitamins and minerals and things. It's very simple. The biggest thing I would like to look at here is if you're going to work, as I said, you're starting off in life or you're restarting your life, you're going to start noticing that, as I said earlier, that you're going to start buying cheeseburgers and shit like that. You know, so quick food. <clears throat> but you implementing machinery into your life, such things as a juicer or a, a high, really high good, I mean, get a really good uh, appliances machinery that I'm talking about here. And this invests in your future, invests in your health, and invests in your time. Uh, invest in your money because it's not going to break down. A lot of uh, cheap products don't have replaceable parts. We're going to get into fixing things and things like that. Uh, but you'll have these things for the rest of your life if you buy them correctly, right? They've got bread makers and stuff. I don't own one, but I, I almost got one. I thought that was really cool. Fresh bread. It's just basically grab these ingredients, a cup of salt, yeast, whatever, flour, throw it in there, two cups of water, whatever it is. I'm just making up numbers here. Push a button, done. By the time you get home, you have a hot, fresh loaf of bread, right? There's so many of these hacks, these machineries that I look at that are very high uh, uh, investing, uh, have high investment uh, qualities. And don't buy the cheap shit, as I say. Go and buy the good things. Start to implement these things in your life. So <clears throat> if you're starting out, in life, you know, look at, you can prepare yourself for the hustle when you do get there so that you can save time and money. And then if you ever decide to pull back, these things still make your life easier because you could be out doing other things like jogging, gardening, or like I said, educating yourself because you didn't have to sit there and bake a piece of, you know, a loaf of bread from scratch. It's all done for you. These things are the way that the uh, industrial revolution, which I look at automation and things that we have coming in our lives, when we look at automation and the, thing, the way businesses are ran, and I say this a lot, and this is one of my life's motto, run your life like a business. When we look at that, we have, how do businesses function? They want things to be streamlined, very easy, very profitable, right? Um, that's what you're doing in your home. If you, can, if you can study businesses, you don't even have to. You can just listen to the implementations that, I, that I'm talking about here that we put in our lives, right? You got your, your blender. Throw all your shit in there. You don't even have to think. When you do it long enough, there's videos out there. You just throw them all. You can pre-make your meal plan, your lunch for the whole fucking week. Don't even have to think about lunch anymore. Done. Literally, in five minutes, my entire five minutes, I shit you not, my entire lunch schedule, don't even have to think about anything. Everything's done for the entire fucking work week. In five minutes, I couldn't even drive off my job to a, a Burger King or you know a, a restaurant within five minutes, let alone the money I'm saving, and the other things that I can I can make my own flowers and stuff like that, uh, my juices and things. I, that's where I keep up my my health because I don't have a lot of time to start cooking by scratch. So and a lot of things get bad in the in the hustle time. So I consider a glass of juice as a full blown salad. I can condense so much vegetables and vitamins and minerals, and they're almost they're pre. Uh, chewed almost pre-digested i know that sounds gross but they're blended down and very easy to easy easily received into the body <clears throat> so machinery and there's all kinds timers oh my god i've got an aquaponic system in my backyard believe it or not i've got like three goldfish in there and we have uh kale growing on the top and mint and what happens is the fish eat the the roots and things they get food and anyways yeah there i get the mint on top and the kale so we both split the food they get the bottom i get the top there's so and the i can set the pump on a timer so i don't even have to worry about things anymore um <clears throat> i live so tiny i just invested in i didn't even know they had was a thermostat that actually plugs into the wall I was going to buy a nice little fire, fake fireplace, you know, heater for myself for the, the winter out here. Uh, but literally, I just got myself my old space heaters. I plug them in. This device plugs into the wall. It's like $30, you know. 
but it I can literally adjust the temperature now. What it'll do is when my small tiny home gets up to say 72 degrees in the winter time, uh, this sensor will shut off, therefore shutting off the heating element, my, my heater that goes to the bottom. Uh, because I have such, live in such tiny quarters, I don't really need much power to actually heat my home. But that's one less thing. I'm saving money, saving the environment. And one less thing I got to do in the morning if I so choose to. One of the problems I'm having, I wanted to go back with uh, for machineries you're investing, <clears throat> is that brewing kombuchas and stuff like fermented foods, they need a certain heat. So while I'm in my brewing process, I can actually keep my house heated and cooled by this device, which is completely automated to keep my place at 75 degrees let's just say uh, that's kind of like the optimal thing for for kombucha you don't want it to get lower than 75 degrees uh, I don't know if it's going to do well like at 65 but it's optimal is like 75 degrees if you can keep that going you can actually get a very nice good brew it's very common that when it gets colder you start to get fermentation rot so yeah, investing in machineries is definitely huge. Uh, when you're investing in a car, this is a 96 F350 uh, 7.3 liter diesel. You guys usually hear me blaring in the background on my work commutes, but I'm not working right now. Uh, we're getting back to it soon. But um, this vehicle, could the motor could be rebuilt for the rest of my life. A lot of old timers, I've told you guys, they look at this and um, they're like, wow, I want to buy that truck from you. I'm like, it's not for sale. It's a really good piece of machinery that's going to get me to and fro anywhere in the country or to work uh, or just simply for my pleasure. This is a truck that it takes my kids instead of owning an RV. It stacks functions, right? That's good. That's an investment in machinery. Next, I look at the accum accumulation of tools. Now, in a simple life, what it affords you is being able to fix your own things, right? I think that a lot of people say that uh you know they have they're in the mentality that's why i pay people like you right i want to kind of bring it back to joshua's podcast on the freedom with this but yeah i, I use my brains not my bronze that's why you're over here fixing my shit right i meet some cocky motherfuckers sometimes and one of the things that 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 i look at is i have way less stress than these people uh, if I walk down the street with holes in my shirt, I don't really give a fuck. I can do so. I can walk fucking almost butt. I could put a pair of leopard fucking Speedos, although it wouldn't be the most beautiful thing. I used to be a twinkle, but now I'm just a wrinkle. Uh, you know, I can do so. And my reputation, <laughs> whatever. I have no reputation of nothing other than people know, like, who knows what this fucker's going to do, right? Anybody who knows me. Uh, I'm creatively free, let's just say. But yeah, I have the, the freedom to be able to do those things. But even if you were rich, uh, we a lot of us contractors and stuff that charge good money. I don't rip people off, but I've seen the prices know that some people, they're, they're almost ripping other people off because they have no idea what they're doing. So in order to know how to fix things, uh, I think well, to, to learn to fix things and buy, invest into tools and things like that and skills gives you the power to know when you're being ripped off and when you're not. I think with the rich, they really don't give a shit. It's like, fix my fucking car, clown, and then get the fuck out of here. I'm over going to make a million dollars today, and you're holding it up, you fucking hood rat, you know? Uh, but <clears throat> I think it really does, uh, it's a really cool thing uh, for people to understand the functionality of how thing, uh, to utilize tools. You know, sometimes there's simple stuff that can happen. You know, you're, you're rich, and your house is fucking burning down, right? Let's say you're one of those rich people that aren't really rich. Like, you've got insurance and things like that, but you have your mother's earrings and your vault, whatever, and, you know, and maybe you didn't get a fireproof one or something. Whatever you have. You have personal goods and things like that. Uh, you know, your children or something in the house, and the house is caught on fire, and it's a gas fire, and you don't even know how to use a fucking tool to shut off the main gas to your house, right? There's an earthquake. Uh, there's, here's a perfect one. There's a fucking earthquake, right? And gas lines are broken. And you can smell gas in your house. I'm going to call the fucking contractor to see if I can get him over here to fix my house. Guess what? We had a fucking major earthquake. There's not, you know, no. everybody's at home. There's no contractor going to go get, so now you got to sleep outside. You're going to go call for help. You know, it's, I'm just saying, someone who's not filthy, filthy rich, they've just been on their way and something like this happens and it jumbles their system up because believe me, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there. They look rich, but they're not very planned out very very um, wisely. And all you had to do is learn to get a pipe wrench or this tool and just close off your gas. Learn how that gas flows. What, how do you know it's off, right? How do you know it's on? I just experienced this the other day where somebody, uh, somebody 
said, I need help. That propane, I can't take the propane off. And I was like, you don't even have a pair of channel lock pliers, right? No. And what they were doing was turning the propane the wrong way. And uh, I just came with one hand and in two seconds, broke it open and said, there you go. And I was like, but it's just so surprising that people don't have tools. <clears throat> so especially, you know, rich people, I don't think they're much, uh, um, you know, this doesn't really affect them too much, but I think it does in certain ways. Uh, as far as get gaining tools, as far as gaining knowledge and things like that. But as you start your life or you restart your life, you should start the accumulation of tools. Like for me, sockets and wrenches and things like that, as I said, pliers, and also the knowledge and the skills to, uh, to learn how to use them. You know, a lot of just because you have a bunch of tools doesn't mean people know how to use them. And this is a huge investment. You know, you look at a guy like me, I've probably got like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth of fucking tools that I've I've accumulated this throughout my life. And I find things that are that are needed. And the value of that, the things that I've been able to fix in my life, or the money that that these tools and these investments have made me, actually it's probably like thirty, forty grand worth of you know, trailers and probably more than that now that I think about it. But anyways, the amount of money that these things afforded me and the diversity, the skills and things, as I said earlier. Because I worked on one thing, I know how to fix another thing now. And a lot of these things tie into each, uh, each other. So um, I have multiple ways of making money. I have the tools to do so, the skills to do so. I have the mobility. I've invested in my, my vehicle. I've invested in my health. Uh, I've got the, the skills to and, and the ability to be able to do pretty much almost anything I want. I mean, even if I wanted to go get another contractor's license, I can easily go do that. Uh, even though I've got two. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you accumulate tools in your life. I think for anybody who's uh, rich as well, is when I say tools, uh, investing power, things that most people when they're rich, they've already, uh, um, I think, learned these things. You know, a long time ago, they started implementing their life. That's why they're rich. But I think there's always room for certain tools, softwares, computer softwares and things like that for us to accumulate no matter what side of the financial spectrum we're on. Um, last one I want to talk about here. Well, we ate up some time. <clears throat> is gardening that's a simple life hack the flavor of the food is amazing the uh, nutritional value of the food is amazing the spiritual connection to the earth by growing your own food is amazing the roi return on investment is amazing i grow a cucumber or a zucchini or a tomato i let these things get to a very large till till the the ripe or the ripeness of perfection I'll take in those seeds out, and out of one zucchini, one tomato, one one uh, 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 cucumber, I get thousands of seeds that are going to grow thousands of more seeds for me the next year. It just keeps accumulating in life. It's good for the earth and everything. Like it says, it tastes good, and yeah, and it just keeps paying on itself over and over and over again. And this is a skill, you know. I look at right now uh, is one of the things that's that's uh, released a lot of stress for myself. Is I have an entire bank of seeds. Uh, I'm a I'm a very uh, giving person, and one of the most beautiful things which I have the, I've placed myself right strategically by having so many seeds, such a huge seed bank that I want to give to people when the shit hits the fucking fan. Uh, I would like to give stuff to people now. I've just got so many things going on, but I my dream is to package some of these seeds, go to a, a, a grocery store, place it on a face place a f Facebook uh, group post. And say, hey, I'll be at Albertsons in Fallbrook, California on Thursday at 10 a.m. with my daughter, Violet. And we're handing out free seed packages, right? Uh, maybe come donate to the cause, whatever. And we'll give people seeds. And we'll teach, like, as, as my dream is with most people. And that's the whole premise of the show. Give a man, a, you know, give a person a fish. You know, you fed them. Teach them to fish. You fed them for life. And that's why I look at with the, the getting your mental straight, getting your mindset straight, and getting these practices and considering stuff uh, in life that you can redo is one of the most greatest, most powerful things you can do for yourself and most liberating. And <clears throat> it's a, it eases stress. It does, it does so much, guys. I think that this is the end of the show. I'm rambling off too much. I wish I could do them longer. I just can't afford. It's not in my budget to uh, to uh, go go more than, than uh, usually 45 minutes, and we're almost on 50. But yeah, the beauty of all of this this hack is that it affords you to pretty much do anything you fucking want. Uh, you're in the clear now. You're in the free. You can, as I said, if you're rich, you can demote yourself. You can downgrade. Uh, you can go right back to where you were, unbox all your things. If you're poor or middle class and you want to get rich, 
Practice. Practice being rich. Get the, uh, uh, God damn it, I can't remember the name. <laughs> Restrict yourself. I, uh, get up at 5, you know, see how it feels to get up at 4.30 in the morning and go running. Even though you got nothing to do, go running. Put those fucking, you know, those earbuds in and start learning how to uh, invest or how to save money and all these some shows like this one. And start practicing doing these things. That's what rich people do. They get up fucking early, right? They have a routine and they stick to it. <clears throat> And maybe it's the thing that you'd look at and go, it's the best thing in my life. Or maybe you'd say, it's the worst thing in my life. And you just don't want to, you don't want to do it. You, know, you just, you, you have money in the bank, as I said. You basically have the ability to take control of your life, to do things the way you want to do them. I, I see a lot of people scattered, a lot of people angry, uh, a lot of people frustrated and doing shit they don't want. And I could see a lot of people losing control of your life. We need to gain that control and what better way to do it than simple living. And that's probably the biggest, like I guess is the biggest hack that I can give you guys. So guys, that's the show. Uh, you know what to do. You know what to do as ever the other people have tell, told you what to do. I'm not going to say it. So uh, my ending is always go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it. Love it. Own it. And bone it any way you want, my friends.